Hey everyone, Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. How you guys doing? It is still too hot to go down south, so don't get me wrong, I'm not discouraged by some of the things I'm gonna talk about in this video. However, <laughs> it's starting to get funny now because as good as this van runs, the more time goes on, the more I figure out, like I'm replacing everything inside the van which is also awesome because I'm really good at interior RV replacement and fixing stuff. As far as the mechanical end here for Ford, I'm not so good at, but this thing runs like a champ. So today we got to talk about the fridge. Yeah, thanks for joining me guys. I will be uploading this video with some Nomad internet link below for how I upload all of these videos on the road. The refrigerator, let's go inside. I feel like I'm starting to lose count of all the things that didn't work in this RV when I got it. The air conditioner, the, I'm still waiting on the uh, water heater underneath the bat, uh, bathtub there. It's back ordered. They sent me an email, said, yeah, we're not shipping that. I've been waiting 11 days for it. And they said, yeah, it's not coming. It's back ordered. So I don't know when I'm gonna get that. I did upgrade and add some decorative lighting here underneath this uh, teal band. I didn't go overboard. It's just this one stretch of about five feet right underneath the cupboard. So um, I'm going to end up hooking it up to DC, but right now it's plugged into AC. And uh, there's the little remote. Just adds a little bit of extra flavor here inside the RV. But going back to this fridge, this is, this is really, really common for reference here. I've got the Dometic. RM2310 two-way gas electric refrigerator with the controls here on the bottom and a manual start for propane, a knob for electric and stuff like that. And no matter what I do now, no matter what I do, danger zone. Yeah, it just, um, it just won't cool. So whether I'm on propane or electric, sometimes it works, sometimes it gets cold, but oftentimes it just stops working completely for whatever reason does have a little freezer compartment up here. Um, I'm not putting any food in it, obviously, because the darn thing just refuses to work. And I've cleaned the outside. We'll go look. This is the uh, refrigerator compartment here. So I've aired this all out quite a bit. Um, it is making some noise right now here on electric, but you know, does it need more refrigerant? You know, it's just, it's one of those things that's just really aggravating when these things go out. And that's not just it. A lot of other people who have purchased these camper vans have realized it as well. Uh, once you go into the Dometic replacement guide, you'll find out that this 2310 model has two replacement refrigerators that are direct fit replaced. Yeah, I don't even believe the whole direct fit anymore. But anyway, the 2351, there's the cicadas, and the 2354 will go in here. You think I can find one of those? Out of stock, back ordered everywhere. There is nothing to order because they don't exist right now. So what do you do? Well, I ordered something else. I'm going a different route because we're putting solar on this sucker next week. We're putting lithium batteries in this thing. This is going to be an off grid beast by the time I get done with it. So I do not need to have a propane three-way Dometic fridge in here. I can get a different fridge, which I'm going to show you later in this video, but today, we're tearing it out. I'm literally taking this fridge out of the RV right now to, to prepare the area for the new fridge. All right, I've been watching YouTube like crazy, so I am a do-it-yourself expert. <laughs> Not really. Uh, first step here, propane tank underneath. Where are we at here? It's like about half a tank. But we gotta turn the propane off. So turn this valve and turn my tank off because we have to disconnect propane at the fridge here. Then we'll go inside and verify that the propane is out of the line. And we'll do that. I've lit the stove. I just turned it on high here. And we want to wait till this burner goes out because look at all that propane that's still in the line. I certainly don't want to uh, let that escape when I turn the fridge off. So come on, burn through it. Oh, there it goes. Almost. There we go, no propane in the line. All right, back outside, let's unplug power. Where's DC? Where's DC power? How come I'm not seeing, is this DC right here? 
Yeah, so I'm gonna have to open up this control box. Looks like there's two screws right there. I need to disconnect the uh, DC power line also. And there's the propane. I also see a screw there that's bolted to this piece of wood and a screw there. So I'll start with these two big screws here. Take these guys out. Let's open this box here. There's some writing on there that has all the information about the fridge from 24 years ago that obviously I can't read at all. <laughs> Let's get this off. All right, so there is my DC connections right there going into the fridge. Oh, of course, switch off your electric and your DC and everything and make sure everything's totally off and don't do what I do, yeah. I just put some uh, wire caps there on the DC. I'm gonna tape those up and secure them and then I'm just gonna store these up here back there out of the way. I may actually use this DC line later. I may put a fuse in it and use it for lights or something, I don't know yet. But we will need the AC power source. This will be connected to solar here next week. We will use this for the refrigerator, so. All right, and then lastly, we're gonna wanna get this propane line off here. I'm probably gonna reuse this later. This is a little bit of flexible copper propane line, but for right now, after I get it off, I'm gonna go get a cap for it so I can put the cap in. I may have to find a way to move it though to get the new fridge in because it looks like it's just totally in the way there. So we will think about how to do that later. The propane's off, so yeah, we're good to go. Oh, there we go. There we go. Cool. cool. she's off she's free see how it's still a little flexible i'm just gonna be easy with it for now uh that ought to do it i guess we're going inside to find the screws inside now and uh looks like this is gonna be a lot easier than some other ones i can literally see the screws i can see a lot of the screws let's see. yeah look they're all pretty much exposed there well, that's pretty cool all right i went ahead and uh, removed the door because there's some ones over here also these screws None of them are in straight. You can't really see, so you just gotta get the head of the bit on there and then kind of find out what angle that they, that they were in the fridge. A little tricky to get these out, but hey, no rush. At least we're working inside today with a little bit of air conditioning. Man, I really need to replace that air conditioner. I just, oh no. I want somebody else to do it who knows how to do it. All right, I took off the uh, control board to find a couple hidden screws underneath the plastic. One there and one there. And now we should be free and ready to pull this guy out. All right, had to put the couch and sofa bed thing up on its stilts here because I don't think that would have cleared this edge right here. I don't know, I'm just kind of making this up as we go, but I think if it's up here like this, I think it's gonna make it and then go right out the side door. We're gonna have to find out but you know, real quick about the air conditioner, I could swap that air conditioner. I can swap anything inside this RV except the engine and transmission myself. However, the point is I've got a buddy coming by and the sucker weighs a hundred pounds so I could really use the help and I'm going to work smarter, not harder, right? All right, here we go. Yes, it's free. It's definitely free. It's also stupid heavy for some reason. Let me just peek and make sure it's really free. Uh, it's not. I left the cord. There's one more screw holding the AC cord. Uh, and you guys have my Phillips. It's right on the son of a. <laughs> uh, thanks for nothing, guys. <coughs> All right. Now we're free. Now we're free, right? Free. Is that hot? Nope. It's not even working. Why would it be hot, Eric? How are we gonna clear? Yo! Scorch! 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 Keep scorching! Yeah! Okay! Okay, turn! Okay! She gone! So we're gonna be waiting on the replacement for a few more days here, but you know, it's also got to make you wonder, you know, how well is this van really insulated? because you've got the fridge here, but also there's that vent there. I mean, I, I understand the purpose of the vents. The, these propane fridges put off a lot of heat that needs to be vented. Now the van doesn't actually have the roof vent that my class A and class C had, but you know, just looking at this, th there's no way this thing retains very good heat or air conditioning. So 
because we've got some rains expected, I am going to have to wrap all this up and secure it so bugs and mosquitoes and hornets and wasps and and everything else doesn't get inside the van. And plus, I, I want to clean this area real, real good. But I can't wait to show you this fridge. We're going to do it in this video. I'm just going to take a break. Uh, but yeah, it's supposed to be a direct fit. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm not giving up on Dometic. I know they're going to start manufacturing stuff and it's going to get back in stock eventually. But right now, it just seems like it's not the right time to build a camper van. So we're just going to be patient. And maybe later on, I will be able to get the new Americana version of this and go back to a three-way fridge. Because it'd be nice to run on propane, uh, you know, at night and then run on electric when you have unlimited solar, you know, so But right now it's sealed up for the rain tonight until we get our, our new fridge that's going in There's another project I want to work on though This is probably the ugliest part of the entire van is the generator door right here Which has completely started to decolorate yellow, you know It's like stained yellow when the rest of the van is beautiful white and then I think they tried the previous owners just tried to mask the yellow by putting on a bunch of stickers so i am going to be pulling these off right now i am also going to be using some goof off to get off all the old adhesive and i'm going to prep this surface and paint it yeah i'm going to paint tonight today yeah i mean it comes off easy enough this is just a really cheap bad sticker but the real work is going to be getting the goof off because you got to get all this adhesive off you know so let me see let me go underneath this one like that and be real careful. Oh, this one's a little more brittle. Let's see here. Ooh, but it's coming off a lot better. It's taking a lot more of the adhesive on this one. That's good. Cool. I mean, even if it comes off perfectly, you're still going to have the edges of dirt where you're going to have to use that goof off stuff. Man, I have removed my share of stickers from vehicles, haven't I? Oh, I like it when it comes off in one piece like that. Heck yeah. Well, I am a Good Sam's member, but um, I don't have roadside assistance through Good Sam's. I have roadside assistance through AAA. You guys remember, I didn't have a very good experience. My first time needing roadside assistance through Good Sam, so. All right. Yeah, look at that. That's nasty. Let me uh, scrub this and get it prepared for paint here. All right, I got all the sticker residue off there. This stuff works amazing. If you have this problem anywhere on your vehicle, it gets rid of all the adhesive. It's super smooth, very decolored right there. But again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tape this off and we're gonna make it we're gonna make it look good again. I've got some plastic drop sheeting. I've got my yellow frog tape. This stuff is so much better than the green kind. Keeps paint out, keeps lines sharp. Yeah, we definitely need that. And I'm going with Krylon Fusion All-in-One Paint Primer. This is gloss white because that is the closest to what we're working with. However, I just understand I realize that everything fades after 24 years right so this might have started white but that's real white or something you know so i understand that this isn't going to be a perfect match there but it's going to look a lot better than yellow all right just about ready here i'm gonna have to wait till the wind dies down a little bit it just started picking up storm is uh, rolling in here but it's not supposed to rain for six more hours so so i'm just kind of checking all my lines to make sure i've got all my lines really really good and as far as I can tell, everything here is ready for paint, y'all. I think we should just do it. Let's get it out of the way. And it's white. All right, here we go. Remember, this is primer and paint all in one here. And we'll probably do three coats like I normally do, but let's get one coat on there where I'm happy with it. And then uh, we'll go from there. Yep, let that dry for an hour and we'll come back to it. All right, so two coats later. Man, I'm really, really happy with that. Like, man, see that color and that color? That really matched super well. I'm also eventually, when I get to Home Depot, I'm probably going to replace this metal grate here too because it's just in poor condition. But uh, yeah, I think I'm happy with uh, two coats there. I'm going to go ahead and pull off this tape. I'll leave the uh, fridge opening there covered. But yeah, let's pull this off and see. All right, first line here. Ready, go. Ooh-wee. 
Yeah, buddy. Oh, man. Let's keep it going. Oh, tape got a little wet there because the air conditioner vent pulled down. <laughs> Is it perfect? No. That's perfect for me. So much better. Wow. Wowzers! Are you guys seeing this? I mean, you saw what the, you saw how yellow this was. It was almost this yellow. <laughs> Man, looks great from a distance. Oh my gosh, this plastic for the fridge—that's okay, actually. It's still pretty white. I mean, I could give it a coat, but. Man, we just transformed that generator bay. Holy. Yeah, so we got a little, I wanna get rid of this so wasps don't get in there. So I'll get some replacement. I also need to clean off this seal and probably redo this seal too, because it's really dirty and grimy, but man, awesome. All right, well, I'm gonna wait for this fridge. I'll get back to you guys here. Yeah, so I mean, you can't forget to run the generator. Even if you're not using the generator, you gotta keep it working well. This is a uh, Micro Light 2800. Still not the quietest generator ever. But uh, I adjusted the altitude back down to zero, because that's where we're at. And uh, I put a load on her, and it's running great. Sounds great. I'll probably do an oil change here this week also, but um, really glad the generator runs. <laughs> One less thing to replace immediately, right? Or work on immediately. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Are we back in business today? Maybe. So if you're an owner of a newer RV, you may have even heard of this company, Ever Chill. This is a DC refrigerator that is becoming more and more popular in RVs. And because they don't have that huge compressor space in the back, it's much, much roomier. This model that I had to get still has a small little ice box up here, but a lot more room inside this one because of the back. Obviously you have to have the heating element and everything going on for the propane. And this refrigerator is not a propane fridge. It is strictly a DC refrigerator. So it's a direct fit replacement apparently. Uh, I'm gonna go throw it in real quick and we'll see what it looks like inside Vanna White. <coughs> what in the heck? Thirty-one and a quarter. If I hear the phrase direct fit replacement one more time upon checkout, uh, where's my laptop? You guys see that? 30.4 false. Oh my gosh. You might think an inch and a half or an inch and three quarters is not that big a deal, but it's very important when you don't have the room. I can't get another inch and a half. I'll show you again. I would have to do major renovations to cut out this whole wall here and raise the microwave. I mean, I, I need it. And the floor and the opening, like we were okay widthwise, but that sucks. This is not going to work. I've been really excited to finish out this video and it is just going to continue to fight me every step of the way. Not only can I not get the three-way I need. <sighs> very frustrating, very, very frustrating. Obviously I need to come up with a new game plan here because this is getting old and um, I am starting to get a little frustrated here with the van. So, um, go ship this back. Load it up, put it back in the van, and we'll return it back through FedEx. I'm going to close this one out, guys, because I am a little frustrated, and I don't want to put any more thought into something I can't control right now. So I'll catch you in the next video. Bye, guys.